Okay, in the last section, we uh, solved first order linear differential equations, found out how to get the solution. And so, uh, in fact, by way of a quick review, we said if we have something of the form, then the solution was e to the negative integral, I'll just write integral of p dx times the integral of e to the positive p dx times q of x dx. Okay? So uh, anyway, there's what we had. So I promised you in the next section we would look at some applications. And actually I've got a bunch of them. They're all tank solution. We're going to be tanking up here going to be uh, situations where we figure out how much salt or how much of a particular substance is, is uh, in a tank which has this uh, solution in it. And this is a, <coughs> excuse me, this is a, um, a continuous analog to what you might have done in algebra class back maybe even in high school. I remember doing problems where you've got, you know, so much solution in so much water, so much salt, and so much water, and then you put in uh, so many gallons of pure water and so many gallons of water that have this amount, and you have to figure out what the overall uh, concentration is, okay? So you have start out with a certain concentration, you put in um, different amounts of different concentrations, and then you figure out what the final one is. But the point is, you always do it in discrete steps. You always do a gallon at a time, right? That's, that's the key to, to the difference between uh, <clears throat> pre-calculus and calculus. Before you have calculus, you have to do things in these discrete steps. Once you have calculus, you can have this continuous process, and you can say, ah, uh, what's, what's the, not only what's the velocity at this particular point in time, but what's the concentration at this particular point in time. So that's, that's the beauty and the power of calculus. So let's take an example. Uh, I'm following the text again, and I've got a picture which has all the information for the problem. I like to, given any problem, I like to draw a picture which basically captures everything. So we've got this tank here, and uh, this tank is filled with, uh, that's a pretty poor looking tank, with uh, 2,000 gallons of water. And in that 2,000 gallons of water, there is 100 pounds of salt dissolved. Okay, so that's, that's what you begin with. And then you have water which is coming in at a rate of 40 gallons per minute. 40 gallons per minute. And this uh, solution has uh, five pounds per of salt per gallon, five pounds per gallon. Okay, which which uh, looks like it's quite a bit more concentration than what you have here. This is 100 pounds in uh, in 2,000 gallons, and this is so that's 100 over 2,000 is one two hundredth, whereas this is five pounds and 40 gallons, which is one eighth. So the stuff coming in has a lot higher concentration than the stuff that's that's initially in there. And then you have stuff that's leaving, the, the, the stuff is leaving at a rate of 45 gallons per minute. Okay, so what you should notice is that stuff is leaving faster than it's coming in, right? So initially, or I shouldn't say initially, eventually that, that tank is going to empty and there won't be any solution in it at all and no salt in it at all, okay? So just physically, that, that's got to be the case. And so what are we after? We want to find out how much salt is there going to be in this tank after 20 minutes. Okay, so after 20 minutes, um, uh, let, let's just say how much salt in tank at I'll say t equal 20. So we're going to assume right off the bat that we're that we're uh, using units of minutes. Okay. 
So, remember what the key is to any real world problem. You've got all this math that you can use uh, that's at your disposal, and then you've got the real world out there, the physical world, and in order to connect these two together, what's the key word? The key word is the word let, right? Let. We, 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 we're interested in something and, and we need to, uh, in other words, we need to determine how much salt is there in the tank at t equal to 20. So I guess that basically tells me what I want to let. I want to let y of t be the amount of salt in tank at time t, and this is in minutes, of course. Okay, so that's what, that's, that, there's, there's the power of, of this word let, okay? So once we have that, we're well on our way. Because then I say, well, what, what, what's going on over here? What, uh, given all this information, what's a, an equation, some sort of an expression that I can, right which is going to capture all of that information in in a mathematical expression and it shouldn't surprise you that the mathematical expression is going to involve uh, derivatives right because first of all it's a de class and secondly we're talking about the rate at which things are happening and whenever you're talking about the rate at which things are happening you're going to more than likely be talking about derivatives so let's start out and, and even on this very first problem, I challenge you, go ahead and feel free to turn off the video for a moment, pause it, and see once if you can write this down on your own, okay? I'll, I'll leave it to you, but uh, that's a great way to see once whether you are kind of getting your mathematical wings and starting to understand how all this stuff is used. So here we go, okay? So what do I want to say? I want to know, I, here, here, here's what all this stuff tells me. It's basically giving me the rate at which the salt is changing. So what is the rate at which the salt is changing? I guess the first thing I can say is, well, the rate at which the salt in this tank is changing is the rate at which it's coming in minus the rate at which it's going out. Agreed? It's coming in at a certain rate and it's leaving at a certain rate and we can figure those we can try to find an expression for each one so first of all what's the rate at which it's coming in okay if you give this to a, even a younger brother or sister or a child or something they might be able to figure it out what do you have here the water's coming in at a rate of 40 gallons per minute and each one of those gallons has five pounds of, of salt in it so if you're familiar with how to use units, you've got 40 gallons per minute of the solution, and each of those in that solution has five pounds of salt, uh, LBS is the abbreviation for pounds, five pounds uh, per, per gallon. Okay, so if you just cancel the units you see that this is a gallons on top and there's a gallons on the bottom and those go away and you end up with 40 times 5 is going to be 200 and the units are going to be pounds per minute doesn't that make sense there's 40 40 gallons per minute coming in and each of those gallons has five pounds of salt so five times 40 is going to be 200 pounds per minute so this is the rate at which it's coming in and I can just actually put a 200 there. It's not 200 T or anything like that, it's just 200 because this is the rate, okay? That's the rate. Okay, so now what's the rate? We're gonna subtract the rate at which it's leaving, okay? So uh, all that salt is coming in, but you also have salt that's, that's leaving. And by the way, you see that the assumption has to be all the way throughout this thing that this stuff is being well stirred, right? Because if the stuff on top has a higher concentration than the stuff on the bottom, that makes it a much more difficult problem. And uh, so we're going to assume that uh, it's the same concentration throughout. So uh, it's all well stirred, and that's part of the assumption. So what's the rate at which it's leaving? Well, again, let's think about that for a second. The rate at which it came in, we had to know how much salt there was, and we had to know what how much how much solution there was right there's your solution there's the amount of salt per 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 gallon 
So can we do the same sort of thing? First of all, um, notice, I mean, you might be tempted to say, well, let's see, there's 100 pounds of salt and there's 2,000 gallons of, of, of water. And so there's the, there's the solution in pounds per, pounds per gallon, right? There's pounds, there's gallons. And so there's your solution of pounds per gallon. But notice that that is just the concentration at the very beginning. That's, that's at instant zero. When you're starting out, that's exactly what the, what the concentration is. But as soon as you go on for one second, now everything's changed, right? Now you have more salt in there and you have uh, less total liquid in there. Everything has changed. So we can't just rely on this initial concentration. We, we, need, we need to know what's going on at any time t. So let's think about this. First of all, how much, how much stuff is there in the tank at time t? Okay, t's in minutes. How much stuff is there in the tank at time t? You start out with 2,000 gallons, and every minute it's losing 5 gallons. Agreed? In a, at a steady rate, it's losing 5 gallons per minute. So the total amount of stuff in the tank is going to be 2,000 minus 5t. There's your total, there's the total volume. There's your total, total, I guess, yeah, volume in gallons of, of stuff in the tank. Do you agree? So there it is. And now, in order to get concentration, we need to know how much salt is there at time t. And so again, at, 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 Initially, you had 100 pounds of salt in there, but how, what's, what, what's the amount of salt at time t, at, you know, in, in general? What do, we, what do we put up there? And this is where it's really tough. You think, well, I don't know. I mean, heck, um, it's, it's, two, it's 100 to start with, but what's it going to be later on? And that's why, if you didn't write this down, let y of t be the amount of salt in the tank at time t, You'd be looking at that for two hours trying to figure out what to put up there. And that's why it's so important to make this the very beginning of your problem. What is it you're starting with? Let y of t be this. And there, it's staring you right in the face. How much salt is there in the tank at time t? There it is, right there. It's y. I could put y of t there. I'll just, I'll just put a y there, okay? Y is a function of t. So there it is. There's, there's the rate at which it's coming in. Here's the rate at which it's going out. The rate at which it's going out is the cut is the is the amount uh, amount. Oh, I'm, oh wait. Uh, let's see. It's the I'm not, I'm not done yet. Sorry about that. This is just the concentration. There's the concentration, right there. The concentration is the total amount of salt divided by the total amount of liquid. There's the concentration. And now, just like we did here, we have to multiply the concentration by the rate at which it's leaving. And it's leaving at a rate of 45. So there you go right there. So, so we did that going in. Here's your concentration times the rate of, in, of coming in. Here's the concentration times the rate at which it's leaving. So there you are. So that's the hard part of the problem right there. Everything else now just goes from what we learned in 3.1. Okay, so the first thing I can do is, I guess I can take this 45 and put it up here. Agreed? And heck, I am someone who knows my numbers. So as soon as I see that 45 up there, I see that I can divide both the top and the bottom by 5 and get minus 9y over, if I divide by 5, what am I going to get? 400 minus t. Agreed? Holy smokes. Why, why deal with those big numbers if you can divide by 5 and get a 9 here? Divided by 5 is going to be uh, 4, 0, 0, and 5 right there. See that? So uh, I'm amazed how many, how many <laughs> people uh, now don't, just don't, don't recognize that with numbers, okay? So anyway, that, that's, that's the beauty of, of knowing numbers. So there it is. So now let's go ahead and write it in its, um, in its um, original form, or I should uh, just say y prime. 
is going to be equal to, uh, well here, let me go y prime, now I'm going to add this, uh, plus, bring this over, it's going to be 9 over 400 minus t, it's a 9 right there, times y, is equal to 200. Agreed? There, y prime, that's the same as dy dt, add this over, 9 over 400 minus t times y is equal to 200. And what's our initial condition? Our initial condition at time equal to 0, how much salt is there in there? 100. See that? So there you have it right there. Okay? So now, notice I'm halfway done with the board and I, all I've gotten is a DE. So I have no choice now but to, um, to start erasing things. So, uh, heck, um, I'm going to, I guess, I guess I'll leave Y of T up there just so we have it and erase this and just put this a little bit higher and see once if I can get everything down below. So I'm going to write Y prime plus 9 over 400 minus t times y equals 200 and then y of 0 is equal to 100. Okay, so there it is. So there it is. That's what we have to solve. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, let's do it. So, um, I tell you what. Uh, before we do it, let's just, just do this ahead of time because notice this is my P right there. In fact, let me just write that. P, P, notice here it's P of T rather than P of X. So P of T uh, is equal to um, 9 divided by 400 minus T. So let's go ahead and just, just integrate that and, and figure. Let, let's figure out what this whole thing is. That'll just make it easier, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate 9 over 400 minus t d, dt. And uh, notice I can do that by just putting a negative right there and a negative right there. And now notice that the derivative, I, oh, in fact, I can bring the 9 out front. So bring the 9 out front and have a negative right there. Okay, agreed I can do that. So now notice that the derivative of the bottom is up on top, so it's just going to become the log of the bottom. So this is going to become minus 9 times the ln of the bottom. And in most of these problems, uh, all these things we're assuming this is going to be a positive quantity. We're, we're, we're never going to get a, a negative uh, t. t is always a, a positive quantity and y is always going to be uh, positive. It can never go negative. So I don't have to worry about absolute values there. This is, this is going to end up being, uh, being positive here. So, um, so um, in fact, notice what happens here. At, when t is equal to 400, what happens? It leaves at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. And so after 400 minutes, 400 times 5 is 2,000 gallons. See that? So a after 400 minutes, the tank is empty. So after 400 gallons, this whole thing no longer even makes sense. The, the, the thing is empty. You're not going down to negative salt. So, so I should maybe even say here, the domain is, is between 0 and 400. Okay, once, once you're past 400, the thing is empty. That's always good. Okay, so that's that. And so now we want e to that thing. So what's e to this? So e to this thing Like that, well, in yesterday, or I should say in the previous lesson, which was an hour ago in my time, uh, we had two ways of doing it. Uh, you could either bring, bring this up here, or you could write it as e to that thing all to the negative ninth power. Let me, let me write it like that. e to the ln of 400 minus t, all of that to the negative ninth power. Because if you have e to one thing all to another power, you multiply the exponents. See that? So you multiply the exponents. So now, 
e to the ln of anything is just that. So this is going to become what? 400 minus t all to the negative ninth power. See that? And that's all to the negative ninth power. That's, so that's, that's all that's all this thing right here. I guess I should have labeled that right to begin with. Um, get rid of a little bit of my that's that's all that right there. Oh no, I'm sorry. That starts right here. Here's where you're taking e to it. So e. e to p of x is right there. This this is your th this is your integral of p of x right here. Just to make sure everything is clear. Okay, this is the integral of p of x right there. Here's e to that is right there. And then finally, the other thing we're going to need is e to the the negative power. So if you take, uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it. E to the negative. How's that going to affect it? Well, if I take the negative, it's going to be the negative of this thing. It's going to be a negative of that thing. It's going to be a negative of that thing. So it's just going to be 400 minus t all to the ninth power. See that? So, dang it. Let's see. First of all, make sure you're still with me here. There you go. Okay. Um, so let's see. Doggone it. Uh, um, I should have left a little room. So um, well, let's let's go ahead and write it down here, and then we might have to write it up above again. So here we go. It's going to be y is equal to e to the negative. So it's going to be 400 minus t all to the ninth power, all times the integral of this whole thing. This whole thing here is 400 minus t all to the negative ninth power times q. And q is um, just 200. That's easy. Uh, dt. See that? So, again, with apologies, I'm going to have to erase this. Some, back when they had chalkboards, they had these really cool chalkboards where you just slid one portion up and the other portion came down. I had a chemistry professor in college. Man, he, he had mastered that. He, he had it all figured out exactly how to flip them up and down so he always knew exactly what he was doing. So here we go. This is going to be 400 minus t all to the ninth power times the integral. I'm going to write this. You know what? I'm just going to bring this 200 out front. There's no reason to have that inside the integral. 200, and then I'm going to have 1 over 400 minus t all to the ninth power there. You know what? I'm going to leave it, I guess, like this. 400 minus t all to the negative ninth power dt. Okay, so that's what we have. And now we need to find the antiderivative of this thing. And you notice that that's just a simple substitution. I can just let u be equal to... Okay, u is going to be 400 minus t. So du will be minus 1 dt, agreed? And so this becomes 200 times 400 minus t all to the ninth. And now, let's be careful here. This is going to be u to the negative 9, right? And then dt is a negative 1 du. So there's my negative du right there. And now we can anti find the antiderivative of that. Negative 200 
400 minus t to the ninth power. And what's the antiderivative? If you have anything to a power, it's just going to be you add one and divide by it. So it's going to be what? u to the negative 8 divided by negative 8. So let's go ahead and just put the u right back in there. It's going to be u to the negative 8 divided by negative 8. So it's going to be 400 minus t all to the negative 8 power and then all divided by negative 8 plus c. Okay, ooh, got to be really careful. There's where your c went, right there. See that? We took the antiderivative. So we're going to get this thing plus c. Very important. Okay? So, now what do we get? Well, what happens when we multiply this out? If I take this thing times this, first of all, this negative will cancel with this negative, and I'm going to get 200 divided by 8. What's 200 divided by 8? Uh, 4 goes into this, I get 50. 4 goes into this, and I get 2. 50 divided by 2 is, is uh, 25. Oh, of course. If I have 8 quarters, I've got $2. So, right? So, uh, so 25, so that's going to be a positive 25. And then this thing divided by this, or this thing times this thing. It's the very same thing. Here you have it to the ninth power, there you have it to the negative eighth power. So you add the exponents and you're going to get what? 400 minus t all to the first power. Agreed? You're going to get that? Now, what happens when you multiply this by this? First of all, I, again, I can call this a C1 if I want to, because C1 times 200 is just going to be another C. So might as well just call it a C. So that's just going to be C. And then, um, so that takes care of this and this. And, and whether it's positive or negative, that's, that's, it doesn't matter, because by the time we put in our, our initial condition, where's our initial condition? Right there. Uh, it's, it's all going to end up being the same thing. Whatever messy thing you have here, whether it's just a C or whether it's something that looks much worse, by the time you put in this initial condition and you actually put it in there, it's, it's going to end up being the same thing by the time you're done. So you might as well keep this as nice looking as, as possible. So this times this is going to be C. And then it's going to be what? 400 minus T to the, to the ninth power. See once, see once if that's what I have. Here I've got, oh dear, I had a five. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, no, let's see, what's going on here? I've got, oh, okay, in the book, I didn't uh, pull uh, pull all those constants out, so I've got I've got something <laughs> nicer here than in the textbook. Um, so I, I, I hopefully I'm right. Um, so um, so th this is good. In the textbook, I forgot to divide everything through by by five. So uh, for whatever reason. So uh, there, that's that's a little nicer looking. So anyway, so there's what we have. We'll hopefully we're, we'll end up at the same spot by the time we're done. So um, so so there's there's your answer. There's your general answer. And now, what do we need to, we need to find out what this C is. And what we know is, is that at time equal to zero, the amount's going to be 100. So let's go ahead and say that 100, I'm going to, I need another marker here. I'm basically done with this one. 100 is equal to Y of zero. And Y of zero means I stick a zero in here. If I stick a zero in here, I'm going to get 25 times 400 plus C times, again, I put zero in here, and I'm going to get 400 to the ninth power. 400 to the ninth power. So what does that tell me that C is equal to? That tells me that C, how do I get C? I first take 100 and I subtract this. So it's going to be uh, 100 minus, uh, let me, let me, do that quickly on my calculator just so I don't miss a zero someplace. It's going to be 25, 400 times, 
that's 10,000. So uh, 10,000 and 100 add to that. It's going to be, it's, it's, by, by the time I take this thing and subtract this thing, it's going to be negative 9,900. That's on top. And then I have to divide by 400 to the ninth power on the bottom. 400 to the ninth power down on the bottom. And that's my um, and that's my value of um, of C. And now that I have C, I can go ahead and put it back in here. So again, sorry about this. I'm going to have to erase a lot of this stuff. Let me erase all this stuff now. Carefully. And so, so here's my here's my final answer. My final answer is that y of t is equal to 25 times 400 minus t plus C, and here it has a negative sign, so it's going to be minus 9,900 divided by 400 to the ninth power. That's a big number. And, and that's uh, C, that's all times this thing. To the ninth. Okay? So there's my expression, given the fact that, that this is my initial condition right there. There's the expression that tells me how much salt there is in the tank at any time, at any time. So, so you can graph that or do anything else you want with it. But now, cross your fingers, if we've done it right, we want to know what? We want to know how much salt is in there, is there in there at time 20. So y of 20 is going to be equal to 25 times... Um, 400 minus 20 is 380, agreed? Minus 9900 over 400 to the ninth power. And again, this is going to be um, 400 minus 20, which is 380 again all to the ninth power. Okay, so let's see once what we get. So first of all, 380 times 25 is 9,500. So this is 9,500 exactly. Okay. Now, notice that both this and this are to the ninth power. So, what, heck, uh, what's th 380 divided by 400 all to the ninth power? That goes, and this is just the same as uh, 19 twentieths, right? So, this is the same as, as, um, as subtract 9900 times 19 twentieths all to the ninth power. And 19 twentieths is the same as 0.95. Agreed? Because uh, 19 nickels is 95 cents. So this is just 0.95. I'm not, I'm not, even though I'm writing it as a decimal, I'm not, uh, that's exactly 0.95. So here we go. So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go now. Um, 0.95, enter. Um, nine, like that, and that, and I'm going to go nine, nine, zero, zero times, and that ends up being 63.39, or 62, 62.39, Point four seven, and so um, so now if I do that and then go ninety five hundred, I get thirty two sixty. Oh man, I did it! Holy smokes, am I happy? If I hadn't gotten it, I wouldn't have known what to do. Thirty two 
sixty point five three for what it's worth. Okay, so there it is. So there's a there's a really nice problem, and um, it shows you shows you how the, all this stuff works. And the rest of the section is basically uh, how many more exercises. That's example one. Anything that I do in in the book is actually is called an example. Anything where I leave it to you to do is called an exercise. So there's two and uh, there's one there's five or how many? Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total it looks like. Okay, so they're all a little bit different. They all have slightly different different situations to them. So each one. Basically, you need to set it up like this, and you're going to have to use, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, um, the, this formula for, for finding the solution of a linear first order. But uh, they're all kind of cool. So go ahead and uh, do those on your own, and, uh, and have fun with them. Very good.